How's it going, everybody? I am Josh, KI6NAZ. At Hamvention, I bumped into a booth. <laughs> I bumped into the whole booth. Now, I walked over to a booth called Eagle One Antennas, and uh, Tristan was fantastic in talking to us about his antenna system, and I had fun learning about it because it was a big curiosity to me. However, I think I've got to do a deeper dive on what this antenna is. So let me let me throw it over to Tristan to have him explain what's going on with the antenna. And then I'd like to add some commentary. Well, the Eagle One antenna is a 10 to 80 meter vertical infed. And uh, what you actually saw here is uh, in this particular situation, uh, I don't have enough ceiling to extend, right. the, extend it to the full height. Yeah. At full height, this antenna is uh, is 32 feet tall. It holds uh, this wire here, which is the antenna wire that feeds up through the center of the antenna. Uh, and it goes all the it, way down. And when it collapses down to 48 inches, mm -hmm. which makes it very portable, we give you these two little clips here that lets you store your antenna wire. And it goes all the way down underneath the bottom, right? Yes. And comes back up? Yes, okay. it feeds through the bottom, and you have your SO239 uh, connection uh -huh. uh, to, your, to your feed line. Your feed line goes through the bottom, up to the center of the pole. It is secured to the top of the mast. There's nothing you have to put together, assemble, or require. It's simply park, place, extend, hook your coax to it, and you're on the air. Now, uh, does it require a tuner? It does require a tuner. On all bands? It's resonant on 40 and, a, okay. and by proxy, you know, 15. So it's a quarter wave on 40. It's a quarter wave on 40, Technically, yes. okay, got it. it uh, it's easily tunable, 40 through 10. It will do uh, 80 comfortably uh, if you can add a counterpoise or radials. So, okay, and you do, do you have a lug we, down we here, do, it looks we like. We provide a lug for the ground or radials. Okay. With the uh, tripod, we have a tripod package, a tripod kit for field portable use. Mm -hmm. We also provide uh, and have uh, hitch mounts. Yeah, this is cool. And okay. hitch mounts allows you to attach this to the back of your vehicle. We have the regular and the extended. Your extended hitch mounts will clear your, your Jeep tires, your, your extended bumpers, and of course uh, your pickup trucks. The extended hitch mount allows you to drop the tailgate and still have full use of your bed. In that case, we provide a ground strap that you can tie into the your lug that we provide. Okay. And you can clamp it to the base of your uh, your frame your hitch of your vehicle. or some good bonding. Yeah, a bonding to your vehicle to and lets your vehicle to become a uh, a good counterpoise or ground plane. This is the support pole that the antenna mounts to. Yeah. In both cases of the tripod and the hitch mount, mm -hmm. this pole sits in the tripod and as well as sits directly into the hitch mount. Okay. There is no guying necessary when your tripod is secured with the ground stakes that we provide. Okay. As well as you do not need it to guide if the it's sitting mount. properly in the hitch mount. A lot of people doing the hitch mount for like POTA, parks lot, on the air. A lot of mobile, a lot yeah. of POTA with hitch nice. mounts. Uh, we also provide RV mounts as well that attach to the ladder of an RV. Yeah. Uh, but the most popular by far for at least parks on the air that I've seen is uh, is the hitch mount. I bet, yeah. For sheer portability. All right, so Tristan, what's this all going to cost to get up and running? All right, an Eagle One antenna uh, out the door is $170. At $170, you get the antenna. The tripod package and the hitch mount package both go out the door at $215. So you get the tripod and hitch for 215 You get the tripod uh, for 215 okay. or the hitch mount for 215 Got it. Okay. Uh, the package includes the green support pole, the antenna, and in the case of the tripod, that's the tripod and three uh, ground stakes. Excellent. All right. They are, you can buy pieces individually, you can buy pieces as packages, and if you are a current Eagle One owner and have problems, bits, pieces, parts needed, you can always email us at eagle1antenna at gmail.com. We are always happy to help our customers. Perfect. Uh, where do people find you? I see that. You can find us at eagle1antenna.com. You can contact us as well at eagle1antenna at gmail.com. Fantastic. Thank you guys both for 
for being out here. How's, how's it been going so far? No good problem. week? Good it's, weekend? It's been a great weekend. Dayton's been good to us. The people have been wonderful. And uh, we certainly look forward to being back next year. Excellent. Thank you. Now here's an opportunity where a picture really is worth um, <laughs> a thousand words. So let's say you're making a 40 meter dipole or a 40 meter vertical and you wanted to make this a quarter wave antenna or a half wave antenna on a dipole. Well, each leg of this dipole is one quarter wavelength on 40 meters, meaning it's roughly 33 feet, each one of these legs for a total of around 66 feet, call it. These are close to, but not the right number. On the vertical side, well, the vertical is just one half of your dipole aligned vertically. That's all it is. So you have roughly a 30 foot rating element vertical with a bunch of radials underneath it. And guess what? Those radial lengths are roughly 33 feet. And you can use more than that. Um, in fact, a lot of people use just a ton of, of radials and just go absolutely nuts. This is a 40 meter antenna. This is a 40 meter antenna. One quarter wavelength on 40 meters. What's a DX commander look like? Well, so let's say you have the center mast here in the middle. It's a telescopic mast, right? And then as you know, there's wires that go along the outside of the antenna. So here's your 40, here's maybe your 20, and then there's a 10. Of course, this is, <laughs> this is not to scale either. But what are these? These are one quarter wavelengths of feet in wire. And then at the bottom, you have two little plates one is for the radiating elements, and then the bottom is for the radial elements. And they all connect at an SO239 connector, like a so. And then that goes off to your radio, okay? That's your coax. This is a quarter wavelength vertical antenna, but it could be built a different way. It could be built as a fan dipole. Fan dipole is just a center connector with many legs at different lengths. So this could be your 40, your 20, and your 10. And then you have your coax that's fed down to your radio. Okay, you get the idea. Hopefully you're getting the idea. These are all quarter wavelength antennas. So what is the Eagle One? Well, the Eagle One is a telescopic mast that has one quarter wavelength of wire running up through the middle of it, and then there's an SO239 connector at the bottom. This wire is roughly 30 feet, 33 feet. Again, roughly, I don't know exactly, okay? So if this is a quarter wave antenna, where are the radials? Well, the radial in this case is likely the coax that is connected to your radio. Is this the effective way to use radials? Uh, no, you know, having this one coax line being your radial is, is probably not a, a great choice. There are no free lunches in antennas and a quarter wave antenna needs a one quarter wavelength side for the negative if this is your vertical or positive side. You need to have a radial system. Again, an, another antenna would have one quarter wavelength of a vertical connection some kind of center connector at the bottom that goes to your coax and then lots of wires underneath. And this is your radial system. This is what allows you this ground plane, as it's sometimes called, and is the other half of your antenna. Again, if we take the Eagle One, so let's assume the wire's in the middle of the, of the telescopic mast here, right? So we've got a telescopic mast, and let's say it goes to the trailer hitch that connects to a vehicle, right? So here's the back of your, of your car. Yeah, there you go, that's, that is a vehicle. Okay, so you got a car here. Well, the car, now you've got, again, one quarter wavelength on 40 meters uh, in a radiating element, and the car is acting as the other half of the antenna. This is your ground plane. So this is functioning as the other half of your vertical antenna. Hey, okay, great. We've got, a, we've got a functioning antenna at that point. This is working as the other half of the antenna, which is great, perfect. The problem is when you want to explore bands outside of 40 meters. 
Well, this is still a one quarter wavelength wire on 40 meters. If you want to do 20 meters, well, what does this wire become? Roughly one half wavelength on 20 meters. That means that you truly are entering into an end fed territory where now when you feed this at the bottom here where your coax connects, now you have one half wavelength of wire in the air. And because you're feeding it at the end, like an end fed antenna, your impedances go from the roughly 70 to 50 ohms that was your vertical slash dipole and in whatever configuration to 2400 ohms at an end fed. So again, if you had a wire in a tree and you had a PL259 and a piece of coax going to your radio over here in the corner, you get the idea radio. At this end point right here, you would be experiencing close to 2400 ohms of resistance because you are feeding it at the end. Now 2400 ohms is, is really just a number I picked out, but um, it, it depends on a lot of things. It depends on the length of the radiating element and the length of whatever is acting as a counterpoise, which again is, is likely your coax. Also, whatever the frequency is, of your radio that you want to operate on. Again, if this is uh, you're attempting 20 meters and this is close to one half wavelength, then you're going to get impedances somewhere between 2000 and 4000, depending. Again, be with all these variables being a part of what will change the characteristic impedance uh, at the end point where you're trying to feed it. Okay, so what is all this, now that I've over, I've complicated things, what does all this have to do with the, the Eagle One antenna? Well, put simply, uh, the Eagle One antenna is not advertising any kind of impedance matching unit like an un-un that we would expect to see in the form of a 49 to 1 or 64 to 1 un-un. K6ARK antenna, for instance, KM4ACK antenna. What are you building when you buy these kits? Well, you're building a 49 to 1 on un generally that goes right here at the feed point and allows for a tuner free uh, type of operation. Now, tuner free in, in optimal situations, sometimes you still need a tuner. So going back to the Eagle One, you get a telescopic mast, and again, I'm, I'm butchering the drawing here, and there is a big old SO239 uh, on the mount. This is the trailer hitch version to a vehicle. And there you go, like that. Well, no amount of ground plane that is the vehicle is going to sort out the you know 2,000 to 4,000 ohm impedance that you're expected to see if you're trying to use this on 20 meters. The only way around that is to, again, deploy something like a 49 to 1 on Un. And I know my U's and N's, wow, they look alike. Well, what does 49 to 1 get you? Well, just divide these numbers and you'll see. If your characteristic impedance is 2400 ohms on 20 meters, and you put a 49 to 1 un on, on it, 49 being the optimal number, divided, you get 49 ohms. So to use the Eagle One, remember, telescopic antenna, on 20 meters because it is one half wavelength on 20 meters, you need to deploy some kind of 49 to 1 un, -un down below. Now, the creator advertises or, or mentions that you can use a tuner which we call a trans match often. The problem with this is that the trans match or tuner is really, really not solving the ultimate problem, which is you have a tuner in line or internal to your radio and likely sit, sat pretty close to your radio in your shack or in your vehicle. All that's doing, the work that it's performing is done right here. It's giving you a 50 ohm impedance that makes your radio happy. It does, it does nothing about the characteristic impedance at the end point here. Now, 
If your trans match exists at the feed point and can handle this 2400 ohm characteristic impedance, then you got something that'll work. That'll do okay for you. Otherwise, you need to step up to a transformer, which is in this case, the 49 to one on, on. Yes, and I know my U's look like N's and vice versa. So going in here, I'm making this video is kind of um, just me taking an opportunity to talk to you, particularly those that may be new to this kind of stuff, that there is no magic antenna that, you know, oh, we just run this lineup and then there you go. You get all bands all the time. Uh, no, there's usually more work involved in, in all things, more money too in some cases. And even then, the, the product that you get is not going to be the most efficient thing ever. If you want efficiency, put a dipole up, a dipole cut for your specific band, get it as high up as you can, boom, there's there's a nice efficient antenna for you. If you want to do a fan dipole, multiple bands, you can do that too. A lot of people though like multi-band single wire antennas. Well, when you start going down that road, you're going to introduce losses, efficiency problems, right? That you won't be able to get back because you're using something like a transformer to bring the impedance down to where you can use it. I'll link in the description to a video from Ham Radio Adventure Guy. He uses the Eagle one a lot, and he seems to like it. He's done a review of it and says it's pretty good. Now, I, I, I want <laughs> that deserves another another mention. When someone says an antenna is good and that they have used it to make contacts, I don't doubt that. I don't doubt that at all. In fact, I have said this before. Yes, it's a lossy antenna, but I've made contacts. That's not to, like, defraud people. It's to say that... Even a wet noodle in some cases will make contacts. And some antennas are going to be good enough for whatever it is you might be doing. In case of Ham Radio Adventure Guy, he can put this up in his car, run a POTA, activate the park, and get on with his day. If he wouldn't have activated that park because putting up the most efficient antenna possible would have taken too much time, been too onerous, been too much of a pain, and he just doesn't do it, well, I'd rather he take the Eagle One in the park and make those contacts and get people some points on the hunting side. That's what this all comes down to. I hope everybody is starting to, to get where I'm going with this is that it doesn't have to be the most efficient thing to work. And a lot of things that aren't efficient are sometimes easier to get into the air. So that's where I'll leave this video. Again, not slamming the Eagle One, but hopefully putting it in the proper light to show you exactly what it is. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video and you have comments, thoughts, questions, post them below. I try to answer as many of them as I can. I am Josh KI6NAZ. If this was helpful, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing and clicking that bell as I live stream every Saturday and every other Wednesday for Ham Nation, as well as drop videos like these. Anyway, take it easy. See ya.